Well, Melissa, did you notice we both have pretty pictures up behind us? Yes, I see that. <laughs> so Janet, yes, Janet from the Netherlands. Wow, that is so awesome. Hi, Janet. Audio is fine from Kathy. Hi, Kathy and Kitty. Sue from Appleton, Wisconsin. Paul's got a connection to Appleton. Awesome. Utah and Michigan, New York. I love this. This is so awesome. Kathy from Spring Hill, just up the road from us. Awesome. Barbara Carlson. So great. So great. Patty Tharp. I'm not sure if everybody else, and Paul, maybe this is a question for you. Can everybody else see? I mean, they can all see the chat, right? So they can see what people are saying in Correct. the chat? Yes. Okay. Right now it says all messages are public in the chat. That's the way it's set up. All right. Awesome. So this is quite a way to do business, you guys. Again, just as more people are, are coming on. I'm sitting here on my sofa. As you can see, I've got my double wedding ring. I'm like, what should I put on the sofa tonight? Oh, how about I put my double wedding ring up there? Uh, behind me over my left shoulder is a quilt that I made long ago, long, long ago when the internet was just like becoming a thing. Uh, it was an online pattern. I found it. I printed out sheets uh, with the instructions and I made that quilt. It's, it's very large. I know you can only see a portion of it, but I made that quilt in probably the late 90s, maybe the very beginning of 2000. At any rate, we moved in the time of when I finished the quilt and when I sent it out to be long armed. Okay, so this was in the day, in the days before I was finishing my own quilts. And the first thing is I couldn't find it when I got ready to send it out to be finished. I couldn't find it. Well, then I eventually found it and I sent it to this lady I was using at the time. She lived on the other side of the state of Florida. So I live on the West Coast. She lived way over on the East Coast, actually down towards the Miami area. So I sent it to her with no rush. I didn't need it back. We were moving whatever. So we moved from Tarpon Springs over to Tampa area. And in the middle of that, she finished my quilt and sent it back to the old address. Well, it got lost in the mail. It could not be tracked. I was like heartbroken <laughs> because I'm thinking my quilt is gone forever. Couldn't track it down. Well, eventually we did. Thank goodness. And uh, yeah, I love that quilt. We painted the wall behind us behind me there to match the quilt. So I do love that quilt a lot. One of my early, early quilts, but kind of, it's always kind of a reminder to me of kind of where I came, you know, where I started and where I came from. And, and now I'm here and doing online training and webinars with y'all. It's just, it's been an amazing, amazing ride. So Paul, is there a way for you to tell how many people are on right now? Okay, so if everybody looks above their chat window at the top, you can see we're on the air and it should say the number of people. We have oh, 30 right I now. Oh, I see, okay. Now I know there are several people that took my advice and registered, but we're not going to be able to join us live so we we are up to 101 registrants for this all right and paul something that we didn't test uh when we were doing our stuff this afternoon was the recording is this just automatically being recorded 
through the yes, app? This, this is automatically recorded through the app. Awesome. Um, well, yes. Awesome. Okay. Do you want to um, just hold Sammy up there for a second so everybody can see that? Uh, yes, he is. <laughs> he, he's awful comfortable right now. Here, let's go down there. Yes, he's in his normal position. He, as Paul likes to call him, is the productivity inhibitor. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, well, two minutes to go. We've got, we've got several more people jumping on. So just in the last few minutes here, uh, just everybody make maybe make a little comment about how easy it was to get on on the. Uh, reg was it easy to register? Was it easy to just find the link and and log on tonight i mean here you are so i'm assuming it couldn't have been too difficult easy easy easiest good i'm very very happy to hear that hello leanne leanne lyons good good i'm really glad Today was quite another productive day. I'm telling you what, it, Paul and I feel like we're we're hitting critical mass. <laughs> like we've got so much in the hopper. The uh, studio is close to being finished, but it's not finished yet. So uh, it's just, we just keep rolling along <laughs> like a freight train. <laughs> but it's a fun life. It is. Paul and I really, really enjoy what we do. And that we have all of you guys following us and online with us tonight. It still just kind of blows my mind. <laughs> all right. Well, it's six o'clock on the nose. I can't hear you, Paul. Can you hear me now? Can yes, now? I can hear you now. Okay, so I did something, as with any new tool, I was experimenting. Oh. And it didn't work. So, oh, okay. <laughs> you can hear me okay. Um, so I guess we can start out a little bit here at 6 o'clock. We're up to 42 people. That um, is so I wanna, awesome. I want to start out by one asking forgiveness since we are experimenting with new service providers to provide these webinars because nothing is free. So we want to get what we can pay for. But um, I accidentally put out the wrong registration link initially to sort of a test area instead of this actual um, area. Okay, so we might have a few glitches. Um, the one reason I chose to start with this web jam provider is that nobody should need to install software to view our webinar and to ask questions through the chat. And if anyone has any issues like I just had, I want you to, well, there, there's a uh, red button at the top of the screen sometimes to reconnect or just hit your um, reload button to reload the page and it should refresh and restart everything. So we're working on simplicity and we're also playing with the tools. So I am going to, oh, since I refreshed, my poll was gone. So I'm gonna ask the quick question, did you have any problems connecting? And you will see this pop up momentarily. And I am going to publish it and let you answer it. And when the poll's done, we will see what the 
percentages. So this is one way to get immediate feedback from you by just throwing a quick question out. It also breaks things up. All right, I'm going to end the poll right now. So you've got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And there is an eight second lag in me speaking and you've seen it. So now end. All right. So as you can see that there were a few, but 97% answered no. So there were a couple. Um, out of the bunch that at least one that had some sort of issue. I guess I'd be in that boat myself, but I'm not allowed to vote. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, why don't we go ahead and get started? Paul and I have a very loose uh, agenda, and we... Hold on, you just froze up here. I think we lost Melissa a second. Let me go see if I can find her. I think the computer was out of power. <laughs> oh, 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 no, oh, no. Ladies and gentlemen, one second here. All right, I love my wife severely, but she is the worst power manager in the world. And since she's not on here and fighting to get back on, I get to talk a while. So uh, let's see if I can, well, we'll see when she gets back. So. She's sitting on the couch with her laptop, and she believes she ran out of power because she didn't have it plugged in. Okay. I'm just going to smile a lot. Okay. So let's see if there's anything in the chat. Okay. How do you make a screen larger? Right now, I only see the two by two inch window. Sherry, Sherry, Sherry. Um, so you should see a very large screen of me right now because we're not sharing a desktop. So I'm filling the full screen and Melissa will come grab half the screen here real quick as she gets connected. Um, I don't understand how you'd see only a two inch window. Do me a favor though. Um, take a picture of it with your phone and email it to paul at mkquilts.com and I'll take a look at it and see if I can figure it out. All right. So Melissa, <laughs> hi dear. Hi. Actually, I don't know that that was it because my, my power shows that there's power on there. So I actually don't know what happened. Did you hit the button? <laughs> I may have. <laughs> All right. Get yourself okay. up on the other screen if you need to. If All right. Out of whack. So. All right. She's getting herself ready. Okay. So people are seeing big screen. Try. Yeah. Um, this is a browser app. So um, one of my tricks for starting from zero if you hit control and the zero button on your keyboard that puts the zoom to a hundred percent and melissa just so you know you're not muted um so it might be a zoom issue setting on your browser so that's sort of a global zoom then you can do a control plus or minus to go find your menus to do zoom and all that other stuff but if you do have issues, screen capture, picture, something like that, and I will, you know, this is part of learning to use a tool. Uh, we are going to try the Zoom webinar application next, I think. Um, they both have different strengths. Um, all right, I'm reading some more here. We have large picture. 
Oh, Charlotte. Yes, I'm sorry. I was supposed to be not showing this. Hmm. Something else I've learned is that this new high definition camera shows that I didn't shave this morning. I'm going to going to have to pay attention to that in the future. Okay, just reading a little chat. Someone said I had to click on a square at the top right of the window to enlarge it. Okay, so that there is a maximize button when you put your cursor over any of our windows. I believe now well, I'm an administrator, so I have more control of this thing. So I can, even though Melissa is sitting there without her picture, I can maximize my picture like this and minimize it down. And oh, Melissa's back in the game. I am back in the game. Okay. So I what don't we're, know. What we're going to do before I let her take over here is put questions in the chat. I'm going to try and make notes of them. We're going to take little breaks, have a poll, answer some questions. And I do expect this to take an hour and a half or forever long. You guys can stay. And we will try and post this. Uh, I think automatically this tool within three hours is going to give you a link to the online recording. Like I said, it's all new to us. So we didn't want to make promises, but we will we'll try and put this out here as free content for you to use. So now I would like to introduce the great, <laughs> sometimes disappearing, MK. Take it away. Okay. So thank you guys for joining. We, we will go ahead and get started. My bad. I don't know what I did, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we all are in the world of computers and computerized quilting. And as we know, things just happen. So I'm not going to have my webcam on the entire time just because I just don't want you to happen to look at me the whole time. But I'll start with it on. Thank you for joining us. We're going to also have some uh, examples to show you tonight just based on some of the questions that came in. All right. OK. And if I if I start sounding very official, as Paul was mentioning, I'm not exactly sure how it will be reposted. I'm not sure if we'll edit it. So um, I might just kind of turn myself off off my webcam and start it. Uh, from the beginning so that we can use it in uh, some editing software as well. Okay, here we go. All right, so good evening, everyone. Welcome to MK Quilts. This is MK. Also on our webinar tonight is PK. We are Melissa and Paul Krushwitz, owners of MK Quilts. We are located in West Central Florida, and we are the developers of the product Quilt Pattern Indexer that we're covering tonight. One of the things that I wanted to do in the beginning is just give you a little bit of the beginning, a little bit of the history of how this came to be and how it was developed. And I've asked Paul to just kind of give a little bit of a review on how he came up with this idea and how he brought it into existence for all of us. Okay, so the short version is Melissa told me to. And I believe it was iPattern Studio that was changing hands and support was in question and things like that. So Melissa's really good at saying, we really need something like this. So we, short version is, I'm too busy to do programming anymore. I found myself a respectable programmer and we worked together with at least 10 of our customers as beta testers. And we came up with this interface. Now this interface is kept simple for a reason. We do a lot of things that are not standard in here, but they make sense to quilters. And that's where we're always trying to approach things from is understanding the quilter. So we put this out here. Um, I did not meet my goal about getting embroidery patterns into this in 2019. I apologize for people that are looking for that. Um, some of its cost, some of its time. I've tried to negotiate getting the intellectual property to do it. You know, if if it costs me an extra five thousand dollars to get it put together, that's a that's a lot of lot of uh, additional software charges. So um, we're going to balance it out. We're going to try. I've still got some ideas. We still got things going in the works. So I wouldn't rule it out. 
uh, just understand that there's a lot of intellectual property in being able to read um, the pattern formats for embroidery and uh, other models as well. So now that we've seen designer come out, I know what they're doing and, and other things. So I think we think we can see a version two this year for sure. All right. And one of the things about the transition from what I was using before to this is really as computerized quilters, we need to be able to have a way to very easily and very quickly find those digital designs that we own. OK, so part of this, the thing with Quilt Pattern Indexer is I am hoping that you will see it gives it actually takes away the need for you to have binder upon binder of printouts of patterns, which is, I mean, it's it's a fine way. I used to do it that way as well, but it's not very practical when you are trying to find something or especially if you are doing this professionally and you have a client with you and you're just trying to wade through loads and buckets of paper to try to find something. Okay, so that really, and like Paul said, we tried to develop this with simplicity in mind, but powerfulness as well. Powerfulness in its simplicity. Okay, so let's start out about how you get it. I know there are those of you on the on the webinar that perhaps don't have the software yet. So we want to reiterate that it is a free 14 day free trial period. If you would like to get it and you haven't so far, we definitely encourage you to do that. Quilt Pattern Indexer, all one word, dot com, and you can download it and then you can try it out for free for 14 days. Once you go to license it, you're going to get that on mkquilts.com. Okay, you're going to go to our store, just search for Quilt Pattern Indexer. You're going to put it in your cart. You're going to purchase it. Then you will be emailed a license, an email with all of the licensing information. Paul, if you have anything else to say about that, jump in right now. But basically, it's it's pretty easy to get it downloaded and installed. No, nope, that's good. Okay. So the first thing that you're going to do when you get into Quilt Pattern Indexer is you need to tell the software where your patterns are located. And, and by that, I mean where on your computer are your patterns located. So that may, just that statement right there may be a little bit, bring you a little bit of anxiety <laughs> because you might not know where they are. So you're going to have to, first of all, have a plan for going to find all of your stuff, wherever you've downloaded them, wherever you've kept them in the past. And you're going to have to come up with your plan for a central repository, if I can use that word. You need the, the, the program is very awesome, but it's not magic. OK, you need to tell it where your stuff is. So to do that, you're going to go under. And let me get up on the right screen here. I'm using multiple screens. You're going to go under the file and you're going to click and you're going to come down under settings. And the first thing that you're going to do, you're going to see down here at the bottom, you've got an add button. Now, obviously, for us Pro Stitcher owners, we know that Handy Quilter puts all of their free designs in a directory called Designs. And when you're at your tablet using this, it's under the C colon backslash designs. So you're going to want to get those designs onto your computer and name it C colon backslash designs. I wouldn't change that. I would keep that the same so that it looks the same on your computer as it looks on your uh, on your computer, laptop, whatever you're doing this on. OK, so that's probably not going to show up right there like mine is. So you're going to come down to the add button. This is going to pull up a window that's going to show your file structure on your computer. You're going to come down to the C drive. You're going to come down until you find designs. Click on it and click OK. Now, I'm not clicking OK because mine was already there. OK. Sweetheart, yes. The designs directory and the, the one that you have up. Well, OK, the first one designs is default. That's included. Then I also do one that defaults to your home directory documents design. So depending whatever your path is leading up to documents. 
that's a default they can be and you can find that in the uh, user manual and FAQ okay thank you my dear so the basic what I'm trying to impart on you right now is that you have to get your stuff into one spot, okay? Now, Paul and I have decided not to go into depth this evening about backup and uh, cloud storage and the like, but I will highly, highly recommend that you have a backup plan and you work the plan, okay? Now, you don't have to have every single file format that you have ever purchased on your hard drive being uh, and have in a uh, quilt pattern index point at it because it's not going to read those other designs anyway. Quilt pattern indexer has been developed to read QPI or I'm sorry, HQF and QLI. QLI is the Statler, the people who have gamels and HQF of course is the handy quilter and HQV also will be uh, found here, okay? And then I guess the HQWA, those are workspace files. I didn't even know that. Okay, so what I do in my studio when I download patterns is I will download them. Most designers give us a whole load of file formats. I'll take that whole directory that I download, I unzip it, I go ahead and put the whole subdirectory off into my cloud storage area. Then I take the one design that I need in the file format that I need it in, normally it's HQF that I grab, and I will take a copy of that file and put it in a folder that I call MK, I'm sorry, it's under, it's under my designs. And it's not, uh, it's not showing up right now, but I will go to a different area so that you can see it. I put it under a folder, let me just pull it up so that you can see. And I have to put this over on the other screen. Okay, so you're looking at my my hard drive right now. So if I go down, and Paul, if I'm saying anything wrong, hop in here. But I think I've got this right. Down here under C, under Designs, if I double-click my Designs, at the very top, I have a folder called MK Purchase Designs. Now, the first thing is you're going to see the little pound symbol in front of it. That's because that will put that directory at the very top of the list. Now, everything else, all these other folders that you're seeing, those are all of the folders that come free with our Pro Stitcher. Okay? So I have chosen, this is just me, you might have another plan. I have chosen to leave my subdirectories that came from Handy Quilter. The only thing that I populate in those subdirectories. Are what came with it okay so I don't ever create more folders underneath of of the Deb Geisler folder or I don't I don't add any other folders to the HQ folder that is what has been provided with for me with my pro stitcher what I choose to do instead is have a folder that has everything that I have purchased so I'm gonna open up my purchased folder now, underneath that folder, there is a folder for every designer that I have ever purchased from, okay? Now, you're going to see there's some overlaps here. We've got my creative stitches here. You guys know that I love Christy Dillon's designs. There's also a folder in the designs folder for Christy Dillon, okay? So you're going to see things here that aren't in the design folder. The Lily Street, I think, is one of them. Legacy, I'm not sure that Legacy is one of them. Okay, so it's just my personal preference to keep anything that I've purchased separate from the designs that came with the, the Pro Stitcher. Okay, now let me go just a little bit deeper into the weeds of how I do things and then you come up with your plan and you work the plan. What I used to do when I bought, bought designs, and let me go down, I was just talking to Patricia Ritter last night, so let me go down to Urban Elements. I own a lot of stuff from Urban Elements. Now you're going to see I, I do still have quite a few subdirectories under my Urban Elements folder. What I used to have was a folder for every single design that I'd ever purchased. It had its own folder. Well, with QPI, there's no earthly reason why I have to have 100 or 150 or 200 folders under Urban Elements. 
I really just have broken it down. I've simplified my file structure so that anything that I buy from Urban Elements, it usually goes into Pantos because I love Urban Elements uh, Pantos, edge to edge, same thing. Okay, so all of those designs go into one folder. Okay, now I do have some sets from her and I decided for the time being to leave the sets alone. But for the most part, any designer that I buy from, let's go down to, um, let's go down to Ann Bright. So Ann Bright, I only have two folders for her. I buy borders from her and I buy pantos and edge to edge from her. Okay, so I very drastically simplified my file folder structure. Okay. Any questions about that or Paul, any comments about my my plan for storage? Nope. Okay, I'm just I'm just kind of looking over the questions. I think I'm gonna let Paul kind of keep an eye on the chat. And if if I need to stop, Paul, you just just break in, okay? Yeah, okay. When you're ready for a breather, I will go back and answer a few questions, but I'm flagging them with the red Q. That's his okay. question, so I can make sure I don't miss them. Okay, so back to back to QPI. So under the file tab, under the settings, you're gonna have to go and add, and hopefully you're not adding a ton of folders. Okay, so simplify your file folder structure. You wanna have designs and you wanna have maybe maybe one or two other ones, but don't make it difficult on yourself, okay? Okay, so that's the first thing that you're gonna have to do. Now, I, I, I do wanna stop really quickly and mention about the names of, of the files themselves. Let me go back and show you real quickly. I'm gonna go under designs. I'm gonna click on that little plus sign right there. I'm gonna go under my purchase designs and I'm gonna go back down to urban elements because I saw something there that I wanted to show you. All right, under my Pantos folder for urban elements. You hopefully, if you've bought patterns, you know that designers give their patterns names, okay? And they name things, they have their own plan for naming things. So I went kind of down to the bottom so that you can see that some of my designs have names that start with uh, abbreviations or letters or numbers. That is the name that the designer has given to it. Now, in my spare time, which I don't have a lot of. But in my spare time, what I have chosen to do is go back through my folders and rename my designs so that I don't have all of the abbreviations and the letters and everything that doesn't make any, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. I'm sure it made sense to the designer. But to me, I want my names of my files to be very, descriptive, just the name of the file, not the number of the file. Now you cannot do that through QPI itself. You have to do that through your file manager, your file explorer system on your computer. Okay, so don't try not to get the two confused. Just because the file structure that you're looking at here looks very much like your computer structure, you can't make any changes to the file or the name of it here. You can only display it. So you're gonna see, I still have some work to do. My QPI's gotten, I've really cleaned it up a lot, but it's not perfect, and I do need to go through and rename some of my files, okay? All right, I will take a breather. Paul, go ahead if you had any questions you wanted to answer. Okay, starting where you're at right there. Some people are going, well, what if I keyword things and then I change the name of the file? Now your keywords are attached to the file, not by the name, but by the contents. We do what's called a hash, but basically the program looks at the actual pattern. And if the pattern is the same, you could call it anything you want. QPI will recognize it as the same pattern. So if Melissa applies keywords to her renamed file, and you still have it called the old name when you load her keywords, it'll automatically be applied. So you don't have to worry about changing the names and losing the keywords, okay? I don't know if that's unique in the industry, but 
I had a aha moment on this when we started creating it and the programmer goes, you know, that's a great idea. And we went off and, and, and implemented that. Um, so I will go back and hit a few questions here. I think, uh, Rennell, Rennell's uh, statement about what about corners? I think that was around the time you were talking about your default directories and that uh, she might want a corners directory. You could do that. What I would recommend is that you keep your corners with the border unit and you keep them named in a way that it's alphabetic so that the name of the design is right next to the name of the design with the word or tag corner or something like that. I also keyword my borders. Any border that has a matching corner, I put the keyword corner on there so that I can always be able to find a border and a corner regardless of how I search for that. So if you type corner in your search pattern at the top there, what happens? Can you show them that? <laughs> There we go. So there's anything. Now see you'll you'll notice that this is a this is a piano key, but it goes with a corner. So that's how I and you're going to see also that I do have some some uh duplicates in here so so please understand that mine still has a little bit of work to do, but it it's getting there. It's it's really getting there. I've also done it with the abbreviation CNR so it's just another way to find it to find anything that's a corner if I do border and corner let me come down here to some that I know have matching do you see how this one it's it's unit and its corner are right next to one another so and this these are corners that go with this with this set so it's it's just a little bit also of thinking it through a little bit like here here's a cute little owl design but it's right next to its corner unit in when i searched for it okay so you you do have to you have to have a plan, your own plan for how you're going to keyword things and what makes sense in your in your head. Paul, can I talk about what we were just talking about before we jumped on as far as um, sharing keywords? Do we, yeah, at some point we want to go through a little demo of you know managing your keywords, backing them up with export and doing that. Why don't we? Um, okay, we'll do that quick then. Go ahead, boss. Okay, so one of the things that uh, when I go around and teach and we talk about QPI, we are the developers, and I have thought this through extensively and what I want to have as my keywords. And you know that you can get people who people who have been willing to share their keywords, you can get those in the file section of the Facebook group. I have chosen not to take a lot of the keywords that are shared there. And that's not, I don't think your keywords are bad or anything like that. I have just really taken the time to do it the MK way, if you will. But you might want mine, okay? I'm just, I'm just saying. So, uh, go ahead, hon. So I was gonna say, but that doesn't mean you can't try out somebody's keywords. And what I wanted to do, let, let's walk through this, honey, and we'll, this is totally unrehearsed. I want you to go to File Export. Now title this um, January 15 Backup. Okay, so this is just, I just did this earlier this evening, so I already have a copy there, but I'll go MK Keywords January Backup. Okay, save it off. Okay, you'll notice I'm, I'm in my downloads directory and I'll just save. Okay. okay. I do not recommend storing any files you want to keep long term like a backup copy of this in downloads. Just thought I'd point that out. So, but for short term, it's fine. So now if you go under file, see reset keywords, go ahead and hit that. 
This will reset the QPI to its defaults. All keywords, favorites, and notes will be removed. Oh my goodness. Are you sure you want me to do this? Go ahead and say yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> See, I told you, back them up first, which you just did. All right. Should I hit yes or no? Say yes. Oh my, no, don't do that. Oh, sorry. Um, just kidding. Um, what? <laughs> see, it's actually it's actually asking you to back them up again here, I guess. So it's forcing you to do the backup I had you do already. So I don't. So you could save this again. You don't need to, but go ahead and click save again. It doesn't matter. Say yes. All right. So I was smart. I made you do it. Now, however, I've reset all your keywords. So scroll down to the bottom and your keywords are gone. So now if I went up and I searched for corner. Okay, Paul, I thought you there's said corner. Oh, there's corner in the word. There's corner in the, in the, in the name of it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so still do the name. Okay, but the point is at this point, you can then go download somebody else's keywords and look at them. OK, so you could go to Facebook you can download someone else's keywords and okay. play with them and decide if you really like them or not. I'll do it. I'll do it for tonight. I'll, I know some I know some people have keywords there. So okay, go to Facebook or wherever you or there's a few of them on the website. But OK, just so, remember, they can't see your primary screen. You I know I'm I, over there. Yep. I got to put it up there on the on the other screen. It's wanting to go full screen on me. <laughs> you guys, I'm doing this on my television tonight. It's pretty bizarre that I can do this and it goes up onto my TV. <laughs> well, we ran into an issue that we're working around right now until I can figure out the right way to do it. So yeah, All right, just grab so a corner. There's the QPI community. We're going to go into the files section. I know that you can't see the whole thing, but it, it doesn't matter, you guys. Okay, so I'm going to come down. Here is Pam's January 2020. Okay. I'm going to download it. It's going uh, down in my downloads, I'm assuming. All right, there's Pam's 2020. Okay, Paul, keep driving. Okay, so go to QPI and import that file. Okay, so there it is. I'm at my downloads directory. There's Pam's and I'll click open. Now scroll down to keywords, break them open. So it looks like she's merged some of your stuff yes, and her stuff, maybe. Yep, and, yep. She does. Okay. She had done some of mine. Yep. The the point being here is you can go look. You can if you load them together and merge them all together and go. Oh, there's a bunch I don't want to. How do you think you should go back to just what you had when we started this exercise? Okay, so what I would do is I would go, I guess, back up to file and. I would reset, reset. the keywords. There we go. Reset yep. the keywords. And go back to your backup copy. Okay, I'm going to hit cancel here because we all know that we've done this. I'm going to hit cancel. Well, you need to add yours back in there though, right? Yep. So I'll go file, import, right? I'm going to import. And mm -hmm. I want my MK keywords January backup. I want to go ahead and open that back up and get that back into my QPI. Now if I scroll okay, down. So, so the problem with what you did there is because you didn't do the backup, I'm not sure it actually reset. Did we check whether it reset or because okay, did it we'll do abandoned? it one more. We'll do it one more yeah. time. We'll reset. Okay. Yes, we'll make a backup. Yes, we better do it. This is our um, let's just call it test backup. Yep. 
Okay, we're in downloads, save. Okay, now you can see the keywords are gone. Keywords are gone. Okay, very good catch, Paul. Okay, so you you need to do the backup every time if you're resetting your keywords. Then I can go and import the other ones, right? Correct. Okay, I'll go to my MK keywords, January backup, and put them in. Okay, so I don't want to I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on keywords, but you do need to think about it. And the point of this exercise, I think, is that go ahead and, and use some of the ones from that people have provided. And if you don't want some of those, you can maybe pick and choose and just import a few of them. Is there a way to do that, honey, to, to go through them and import just a handful? I will think on that. Right now, I don't believe so, but we will think on that. So let me okay. run in reverse order down these questions real quick, okay, that people have asked so far. How do you merge keyword files like my own and MKs? You just load MKs on top of yours. Like we showed, just do the backups. Okay, Lisa, hopefully that answered your question. Um, best place for to search for keywords, um, probably our Facebook group, I would suggest. Uh, Joanne... Can you alpha new design so that they don't go to the bottom? I'm not sure I understand. Okay, that. so I that. think that's more of a planning and naming thing. You have to name your files in your directories so that they're appropriately alphabetic. Okay, so I'm kind of I'm kind of combining two questions. There was a question about how did I get the corner next to the border to to show up one right next to the other. So right now you're looking at my and bright my my purchased and bright folder down into borders. Okay, in her folder in in my folder for and bright, I've got something called baby flower. It's a border. It's right next to the design that is also called baby flower, but it has the word corner in it. Okay, so I've got her stuff one right after the other so that the border and the corner are showing up together. Um, and that just makes me that just makes me pause to let you know that QPI, even if you never did anything with keywording, let's just pretend for a minute that you're never you're not gonna busy yourself with keywords in the beginning. As long as you know where you saved it, you should be able to go right to that folder in QPI, click on the folder, and anything that's in that folder, at least you, you can see them all together. And maybe you want to pick and choose from only Ann Bright's stuff. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, go ahead, Paul. Any other questions? Oh, yeah, we got a bunch of them here. Um, Related to that, uh, how many keywords can you assign a single design? I think the total keywords cannot exceed 255 char characters, but maybe it's 512. I am not sure, but I will max keywords. All right, we will get that taken care of. Um, I'm just going to throw one of mine up here on the screen so that you can see I've got a whole lot of, of keywords on this particular one. Yeah, so I think it's ridiculously long for what you're doing, but I will look into that. Kathy Lambert, you are having a problem. You're probably running a Windows 7 machine. She says, problem I'm having is I'm unable to type in the search bar. The search bar in Rare, there, it's a bug. Since it's Windows 7, they're not going to fix it. And if you find that QPI is unusable, we'll give you your money back. It's, it's hit a few people along the way. I suggest getting a new computer, but I know that's not always reasonable. Uh, Charlotte, how do you label a borders corner oh, side by side? We handle that one. Cricket, how about full sets? Are they listed in the set folders and in your Pantos borders frames, et cetera, folders, or should the designs only be in one folder? Melissa. Okay, so that that is a question that I've been chewing on myself. Because sometimes you might let's take let's take Christy Dillon for for an example. I buy a lot of her stuff. Let me go down to her folder um, on my system. 
Let me make sure I'm in the right spot. So here's my purchase designs. Yep, that's where I want to be. And I'll come down to my creative stitches. Okay, so I still do have some of Christie's stuff just in the set that I bought it in. Because sometimes, like this is one of her most recent ones, her Eleonora set. I might just want to click on that folder and see everything together. Okay, let's just let's just bank that information for a second. I have a set called Eleonora and everything is in there. Let me go up to my Christy. I'm still in my creative stitches and I, let's go to her block folder in my structure. Okay, if I look across here, let's go down to the E's. I don't have any of the Eleonora broken out into my block folder. But as I'm looking, I see that I do have others. I know that Fulton was a set. I know that Georgiana was a set. So I haven't even come to my conclusion on that yet myself. Um, I think it's probably going to be what makes most sense to you. If you want, if you want to put them in both places, just know that you're going to have some duplicates out there. Duplicates aren't necessarily a bad thing. If you want to have them in both places, put them in both places. So that'd be a good time to go over to file and select, click there, find duplicate files. Like Melissa said, there's no problem having multiple files, but you can just, this is a tool. And you can see she's got three copies of that. And there's the names, you know, each one on the left side, there's more than one, not a problem. But if you were to be working on cleaning up, you could use the this duplicate patterns thing. Now, QPI does not delete or move a file. It will copy a file, like to copy a pattern to USB. But I did that so I didn't have to worry about someone saying, well, QPI deleted my patterns. You know, it can't. There is no function in there to do that. And that's why you see the open in file explorer button down there. If she were to choose one of the files in the right side there and click on open file explorer, you'll see that the file explorer comes up and then you've got to manage your own files. So that right. was a, a choice. So very good. Good, good question, Cricket. Um, let's get back to some early ones here. Lisa, uh, if you resaved over the C colon designs folder, would your purchase designs folder go away or would it only replace what was there? As with copying anything or reloading the handy quilter um, programs again, it will overwrite files of the same name, but it won't delete anything there. So if they updated a file and called it the same thing, you could overwrite a file by reinstalling ProStitcher, a newer version or whatever, but it will not affect any of your unique folders or directories. Um, Deb. I also quilt with designs that have the .txt extension. No QPI will not handle those files at this time. Lisa, ah, Lisa, please do something on the cloud drive. I will tell you that's going to be the most complicated, nerdy class that I <laughs> need to work on because it is so mind-boggling even for me because of the convoluted way that everything's evolved. So I expect this to be like a 30 day course because you're only going to be able to take little bits of it at a time to get you to understand, you know, file management all the way up to what does it mean that my files in the cloud? What do you mean it exists here and here type thing? And I can access it from over here. So yes, I'm excited and scared to think about doing that class, but that is part of our future here to provide this type of training. All right. Now, Julie had asked, is that why my HQ designs don't show? That was earlier when we were talking about settings, I think, and we can follow up with you later to make sure we get things going. Um, 
When I resize a pattern for a quilt, I later find the new save in my customer's folder also comes up on my QPI search. So I would have five patterns, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so here's the situation. Wherever you're storing your customer's patterns, your, your folders with the customers, do it outside of a directory that is being indexed by QPI, okay? Exactly. That, that'll make it simple and and it's just basic file management again. Uh, Kitty, uh, Buzzworks for embroidery patterns. I know nothing about Buzzworks. Um, I don't know how to answer that question, Melissa. Is QPI user friendly and do I need a separate program for long arming? Right now, QPI is only for long arming uh, patterns at this time. Okay, why don't we shift again, Paul, you can continue to review some of the questions. What I want to do is shift now a little bit and show you some actual concrete ways in which I use this in my everyday life. Okay, so yes, you're going to need to spend some time making your plan and working your plan, cleaning up your systems, finding things, getting them centralized. That's the very first thing that you need to do. Then you can de decide about whose keywords, my own, a combination of other people's, how you want to handle that. Okay, now let's let's go into the realm of okay i've been working with my qpi it's gotten to the point where i'm pretty happy with it i have a customer that walks in and i need to pick some designs for her quilt okay so the first thing is hold on i got to clear my throat and, and take a sip of water so hold on one second okay so the first thing is you do have to have an awareness of how your your items have been keyworded. I want to show you and some people who upload my keywords ask me why do I have these numbers in my keywords. Let me go up to the top. So here I have some uh, decimal points with numbers. I do that because I have my edge to edge designs. I'm kind of sharing with you right now some proprietary information out of MK Quilts. I have decided to keyword my edge to edge designs in several different price points, okay? Price points that are down here in this real low setting or low category, these are designs that are very simple. I don't charge a lot for these because they're very simple designs. So if I have a client that walks in and I know that she's on a fixed income or this is a gift and she wants something very simple, I'm not going to shoot her a three cent or over three cent pattern because I know she doesn't want that. She can't afford that right now. So how about I just type in the word edge to edge and I put in 0 0.0195 and hit enter and I will get just those designs that I think I can find something for her that she will like. Okay. Now, when I'm working in my studio in real life, I have multiple monitors. So what I'll do sometimes is I'll say, okay, Betty, do you like this one right here? And I was clicking on that right there. It popped up on another screen, so let me grab it and I'll pull it over here where you can see it. This is not, this working with two things is a little difficult. One moment, please, there we go. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll pull this over onto the side where I have another monitor and let her look at that while I say, okay, Betty, you like that one? How about, how about this one? Do you like this little one with hearts? Again, let me grab it for you. And so what I'll let her do from patterns that she can afford, I will pull you know three or four up on the screen and I'll let her go through a process of elimination okay so that's that's one thing I'll do sometimes what I do and I'm just being really honest about this sometimes if she comes in my client comes in and she's like I don't know Melissa I I have no idea what do you think what do you think we should do on this pattern I'm probably gonna let her look at designs that fall into one of my mid price ranges, okay? Because I'm like, oh, well, she's wanting advice, so let's go up to two and a half cents a square inch, and let's put in edge to edge, 
Okay, so now she's looking at patterns that are a little nicer. They're a little fancier, and I'll, I'll do that with her. Okay, so it's one of the ways that I work with my edge-to-edge -edge designs to let let the client choose something from what I know they're going to, they're going to be able to find something that they like in that price point. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about for any of those of you who have taken any of my online classes or my sessions, live sessions, you know that we do this technique called inside fit with the border techniques. Okay, and you know that we talk about the fact that I only like to look at certain types of edge to edge patterns so that I know they're going to fit in this squarish or rectangular ish shape. Okay, well, if that's going to be my my point with her, I'm going to go, okay, we want floral. We want something that's floral and it needs to be an inside fit. Hit enter. Oh, these are the ones that she gets to pick from. He or she, I don't mean to be sexist. Okay, so I really try to use my keywords smart so that when she's looking and trying to pick things that I'm showing her things that I already know she's gonna like. Does, does that make sense? So th that's another way that I do that. Okay, let's take this to the next step. Okay, she's looking at the screen over my shoulder and she says to me, Melissa, I like this one right here. And I'm thinking, okay, so I'm gonna hit the select button. She goes, I like this one right here and I might like this one right there. And, oh, I don't know, maybe she likes this one. Okay, I don't let her go on forever because we don't wanna spend all day. I'll give her three or four choices. Okay, I hit the select button there and I chose three or four of these patterns. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to right click. I'm going to go copy to. Right down here, I'm going to decide where am I creating this. In my world, I have a folder that's called MK Working Quilts. It's just things that I'm working on. So let me make a new folder. I'm going to call this pound sign 00, and this is QPI webinar example. Okay, so I've made a folder right from within QPI. I'm pointed at the folder and I'm going to click OK. All right, so we've we've put three patterns in the folder, but her quilt has a border on it and she might want to look at some border designs. OK, I'm already thinking, well, we just picked floral designs, so let's go. Let's go border and let's go swirl. OK, here are some some borders that fit into that category. And she might be like, oh, I really like that one, Melissa. Okay, let's hit select. Let's let's click that one. And I see I've got duplicates. Don't, no judging the teacher, right? Okay, so she might say, oh, I really like this one, or maybe she likes this one. Okay, three choices. Right click, copy to folder. It's already pointed at the folder that I just created. Click yes. Okay, now here's something, one of the reasons why you might want my keywords. All of us have quilts that we have really narrow sashes on, like an inch to an inch and a half, or maybe an inch and a half to two inches. Well, I don't wanna look at every sash that I have because I know that not all of them are gonna look good in something that's that small. So if she's got a really small sash, I'm gonna go sash narrow. And only those sashes that I know work well in teeny weeny little borders, those are the only ones that she's gonna get to pick from, okay? So it's another reason why you need to know your, you need to know your own patterns and you need to know how to keyword those appropriately so that when you've got a client looking over your shoulder, you're only showing her things that you already know are gonna work together, gonna work and look good on her on her quilt, and those are the only things you're showing her. Okay, right click, we'll stop here. Okay, we're pointed at the folder, boom. Okay, so we should have about nine patterns in that folder. Okay, we. I tell her, you know what, let me think about your quilt a little bit. Most of my clients will let me do that. I'll say, I'll send you a quote when I kinda come up with a plan for your quilt. Okay, get all her contact information, she leaves. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is go into simulation and start working on her quilt. Paul, I saw you pop up there. Did you have a question or a comment?
Well, when you, you, one, the crowd is going wild. I can hear the applause through the <laughs> internet. Um, that was actually very impressive. And I'm not being sarcastic. That was great. Now, if you want to take a breather, somebody raised their hand that they would like to speak with us. Since okay. this is also a testing mechanism, Judy Lardier, forgive me, Crushwitz is often mispronounced. This webinar feature allows us to bring one person onto the audio to and be careful if don't turn on your video if you don't want to be seen, Judy. <laughs> but I, I have never done this before. But what we're going to do is, Melissa, quit sharing your screen for a moment. And since I've never done this before, I'm going to click the accept button on Judy. Judy, check your screen because I have no idea whether... Okay, I accepted a speaking thing, but I don't see that. So I'm going back to chat. So Judy, type in the chat so I at least know you're still there. I just noticed that we have the speak request. And it didn't do anything. Offers videos, file sharing, side breath, speak request. I have no pending requests. So anyone else, you, you can look at your system and see if you can request the opportunity to speak. And we will try and bring you online just to see how things are going. Uh, right now, as presenters, we can hear each other talk in real time. But you guys are hearing us about eight seconds later. So it's another challenge for allowing other people to speak as well. So since Judy isn't responding there. I'm just going to continue. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. we got two more requests. Hold on, let's see. I'll return Judy as attendee. Hold on, let's see if that works. Hmm. Did you just turn on your screen, dear? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. Turn it off, please. A <laughs> second. <laughs> I'm going to get one of these people to work. All right. Uh, Kitty Williams is next up. If I say accept, Kitty, is there a way at the top of your screen now where you can click on a microphone to speak? I may have to study up on this because Kitty is not talking. Okay, I'm going to throw Kitty back to the wolves and go <laughs> to, give me a few, I got a few more brave people here. Um, Karen is waiting here. Sorry, Kitty. Return as attendee. <sighs> These new tools are fun. Okay, Karen, I'm clicking accept. Do you see anything on your screen about, you know, you got to have your microphone ready or whatever. Okay, clearly, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I will study up on that. We got one more, Elaine. I'm going to try her next. It says return as attendee. Turn that off. I have to be patient. Uh, okay, we'll play with that, that feature later. Sorry. Okay. Okay, Melissa, no, go back that, to it. That was a very... And thank you guys for letting us, um, you know, experiment with things like that, because we do with a, as large of a group as we had tonight. We're not going to be able to have everybody be able to speak, but it is something that we would want to do. OK, so let's get back to our real live how I use QPI. This is exactly how I do it in my studio. You guys, this I use it like this every single day. Okay, I'm going to shift on over. I've got my Pro Stitcher open. And then she has gone home. I am ready to fire up my simulator. I'm going to do design open. I'm looking at my C working quilt directory. There's the QPI. And there are all of the files that I threw into the folder that I'm going to start working with. Okay, now I know that somebody is going to ask about the file formats and the colors on the screen. That just have all the colors have to do with the file type. Okay, let's turn off 
all of these buttons down here at the bottom for a second. So I'm left with only HQF files that are showing right now. So clearly the HQF ones are this gold color. HQV, if I turn off HQF, HQV are the purple ones. Okay, and I may have a QLI in there. So QLI, those are the bluish colored ones. Okay, so I'm just going to turn them all back on. Don't pay attention to the colors. That's not important. The important part of this exercise was that very quickly, you and your client were able to determine that you wanted something floral, you wanted something swirl, and you wanted something that had a narrow sash. And very, excuse me, very, very easily and quickly, using your quilt pattern indexer, you were able to find those, drop them in a folder, and now you can work with your uh, your simulator. Okay, I did want to throw in just a little bit about this new designer that has come out. So let me get on over there. Here's designer. Now, right before we came on live with you, I actually made a little bit of a change to my file structure, my file folder structure. Because in designer, if you've not been in there yet, there's this little tool down here. It's the design folder tool. And when you click on it, it will show you your C designs folder. Well, prior to this evening, I didn't have my purchased designs under the C designs folder. So the only thing that I could see in designer were the free folders that came with my Pro Stitcher. I mean, that's wonderful, great, but I might want to be able to see other things, things that I have purchased. So that's another reason why, as you're thinking about your, your file structure, how you want to do that in your world, you might want to have this separate folder, but put it under the designs folder. Because in, in Pro Stitcher Designer, you can't choose any. Paul and I tried. We tried to be able to look at different folders down here, and you can't do it. Okay? All right, let's just, just do something for fun because we can. Let's do file open. Let's look at our folder. So we're down to C designs under our, my working quilts. There's my QPI folder. And here are the fo here are the designs that are in the folder that I threw in. And it all started with QPI. Okay, so I hope that that one little example can show you that it's worth the money right there. <laughs> I mean, I just, I, I couldn't even, I don't even know how I did this before. I mean, I know I had the other program and then that went away. But I, this, this QPI has completely transformed the way that I quilt. It's such, a, it's such an amazing tool. I can't even tell you how it's changed, rocked my world. She's looking at the other screen, people. That My little face isn't up where she's looking. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we were having a little fun on your part. Can you go back to designer here? Yes. And we will not go down this road, but I want them to, because the question is going to be, why is there a blue arrow next to the pound MK purchase designs? Okay, Mr. Tech Guru, take it away. Okay, so I made a pretty crude and we will improve it, but it gets back into this whole lesson on cloud computing and other things. That is a symbolic link. So basically, instead of it actually being a file, it is or it's, it's, yeah, back up, delete. OK, instead of being a folder, it is actually a file that is pointing the program to another folder that happens to be in Melissa's OneDrive folder under her documents, her documents OneDrive. So the problem is if you have to go get it there, or in this case, it won't go there. The program doesn't look at anything outside of designs until we fooled it. So there's a video out there. I'll post the link here. But in the end, it is an advanced topic. But the, the message is you can still store your purchase stuff in the cloud on your home directory and still make it appear like it's sitting in your designs folder down on the C drive. So I just wanted to make that point out. These are things that we hope to bring to you in the future in digestible bites. Um, we're focused on content this year because learning, 
you know, we can only absorb so much each time. So I wanted to make the point out there's a lot here, but don't try and swallow it all tonight. And if you like it, just let us know through feedback and uh, we'll, we'll keep doing it. Okay, we're right at the hour mark, but um, if you're okay with it, and Paul, I think we discussed this right before we went live, I would like to really quickly show you how I purchase a design, how I download it, how I extract it, and how I get that file um, indexed in QPI. Because one of the things that I have made as a new rule, it's, it's kind of a cardinal rule I've imposed upon myself, is that any time that I purchase something, I cannot, I repeat, I cannot say, oh, I'll index that next week, or I'll, I'm going to wait till I have four or five things, and then I'll work it in QPI. No. Uh, it's a cardinal rule that when I purchase it, I must stop, and I must get the copy, put it in the folder that it belongs in, and I must keyword it at that moment before I move on and do anything else. So would you all be okay if I showed you how to do that? I know you can't talk, but I'm waiting to see the chats. Yes, can we can we take a few minutes and do that? You okay. have a yes, please, so keep moving. <laughs> okay, all right. So the first thing is, have you guys ever um, bought something that you've already owned and then you're like oh for Pete's sakes you dummy you just bought something that you already had well let's let QPI help us from you know doubly spending our money so the other day I posted a link about the Chantilly pattern that Urban Elements has on special this week and I think I saw Cheryl Seiler was on our webinar Cheryl had a picture of a quilt that she used this pattern and it was called Chantilly so I'm in my patterns. I'm pointed at patterns. The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I don't already own it. Okay, so I'm going to type in the word Chantilly. I think that's how it's spelled. Yep, nope, I didn't find it. Second way that I can double check myself, I can go look at Urban Elements Panto folder, couldn't I? Okay, I'm down under Purchase Designs. I'm going to come down to Urban Elements. There it is. I'm going to go under the Pantos folder. I'm looking at my C's. I don't see a Chantilly there. And I'm going to go down to the bottom because I, I, I still have some work to do. I don't think, I don't see anything that looks like that Chantilly pattern. Okay. That tells me I don't own it. Okay. I'm going to go and purchase it. Okay. I may top, I may stop my screen when I get to the credit card or the rewards points or whatever, but I'm going to go ahead and pull up a browser. I'm going to go over to Urban Elements and I'm going to buy the thing. Okay, so bear with me a second. I got to go over to my other screen. Paul, why don't you talk for a second if you have anything else or any other questions while I go ahead and log in and I will um, purchase this pattern. Okay, so we're going to watch what you're doing, but the few other things that I want to mention is make sure you go under your... Um, I don't even know if support tab, or whatever. There's a manual online, and I've been updating the bottom part of it that has the FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions. So I've been trying to answer some of these questions we're doing today um, in there. And I know it's hard to be told to go read the manual, but at least read the FAQ. Uh, you can get to it from within Quilt Pattern Studio by going under Help and Support. It just jumps you to a web page. All right, uh, definitely something you want to do. As you can see, Melissa's going out there. She's selecting and ordering her, her pattern here. But I just wanted to fire that in. Even though the lesson may be over, we're, we're constantly trying to enhance the, the instructions and stuff out there. And I appreciate all the people on Facebook that have been answering questions throughout the, throughout the year or two that we've had this product out there. So how you doing, babe? I think I just stopped sharing my screen while I put my credit card information in here. Uh, I can still see the screen, but maybe you're on your, just bring it over to your other. Okay. Other window. Cause I can see this urban elements. Well, maybe it just froze up. That's interesting. I don't know. So people, do you like my faces? <laughs> All right. I oh, think there it goes. I, it went away. Okay. All right. Let me finish my purchase. I'm just checking out. 
Hold tight. Sammy, where are you when I need someone good looking? Oh, he's, see, see, that's Sammy. That's his perch. Hi, Sammy. You know, he is our mascot, definitely. Oh, hey, this is actually fun. It's 7-12 at night, and as long as you don't mind me having a little uh, of the vineyard here, uh, we don't mind spending time with you guys and answering questions. So let me quick throw up a poll while she finishes, and this poll is going to be here again, first time we've used this tool. Would you attend regular webinars? done every week or two yes no and i want to try this i would watch the recording all right so let me see how this goes here you go people let's do this for about 30 seconds and it is really cool to watch these things actively appear to Melissa and I, and we'll publish it when we close it. So, all right, we're going to give you 10 seconds plus eight for the delay. All right. And hold on before you start, we're ending the poll. Three, two, one. And here's the results, folks. 83% said yes. Some grumpy person said no, and other people would <laughs> catch up on the recording. So obviously, if you spent an hour with us, we thank you. Um, Paul, can like you said, still hear me? I can hear you, yes. Okay. All right, let's All go right. ahead and move I'm on done. so we can let these fine people get on out of here. Okay, I'm gonna, I just purchased the Chantilly design. I'm going to go ahead and download it. There it goes into my downloads directory. It's finishing up. It's done. I'm going to go, this is how I do it, Paul. If you have any comments, save them for later. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show in folder. There's my Chantilly that I, it's in downloads. I'm going to double click it. I'm just going to extract all. And this just popped up off screen. I'm saying yes, extract. I'm just leaving it in the same folder. And now there is all of the um, file formats that Patricia uh, provides. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to downloads real quickly. There's my extracted folder. I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit cut. Now I'm going to go over into my OneDrive. This is my cloud storage uh, plan and I am going to go here. I'm going to come down to Urban Elements. I believe I have a folder for her down here. Yep, there it is. I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit paste. Now I know that the very first step that I did was I made a backup copy of that purchase, okay? Okay, so now I'm in my cloud area. I'm gonna go into the Chantilly. I'm gonna uh, sort this by type, by file type, and I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna grab the HQF. There it is. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna say copy. I'm gonna come on over here to my C drive. I'm going under my, let me open it up. Here we go. Where's my designs? There we go. Here's my purchase designs. Just takes a few clicks. I'm going down to Urban Elements. I'm in Pantos. Right click and paste. Okay, now here, here comes the lesson on PRLF, whatever the heck that is. Great. Thank you, Patricia, but I don't want that. Okay, I'm going to go and the front of that and I'm just going to delete those characters and it's just called Chantilly. Okay, that alphabetizes it in my folder. Okay, here we go over to QPI. All right, I'm going to go and the first thing that I usually do and I don't know if I need to be doing this, Paul, you can chime in, but anytime that I've been working with QPI and I add something to it, I go under file refresh tree. And that just kind of refreshes everything. My QPI just went and looked at all everything and re-indexed everything. Okay, I'm in my Pantos under Urban Elements. If I go back to the top, there it is right there. Boom, Chantilly is in there. Now, if I click on it, again, this is popping up on my other screen, I do believe. Hold on. I got to get it. Got to move it over onto the screens.
All right, I'm going to close a couple of other things because I don't know. I think I might have too many things open here. <laughs> Paul, don't I, say I think, Paul, don't I say I think you're getting confused because you see your cursor on the primary screen in the window showing what you're broadcasting. Your screen, your oh. cursor was still over to the right side. So swing it left and you'll go get, you can pull stuff over. See it? No. Move your cursor to the left and it'll be on your laptop screen. And yeah, but there's, it over. yeah, it's, but I'm not seeing it there either. So just bear with me. It's probably behind the windows. Yeah, on your it's, laptop. yeah, I think it is, but I'm not seeing it. It's just you, a multiple you, screen issue. You guys, it's not that it's not there. Go ahead and re reduce your, your browser down. Okay. On your left screen. Well, not the, well, the one that start working on your other screen. That's where it's hiding. Um, if you were here right now, Paul, you would see that I don't see anything on my other screen. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I told you I have a lot yeah, of stuff you dragged, open. <laughs> you dragged you dragged your your this screen over here, which oh. obviously. Yes, I think I I've been did. drinking too much. So you need I to did. I did. I did. Okay. You're right. right. I did. Now you're catching on. This is why we <laughs> okay. call this practice, people. It's just practice. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I'm still not seeing it. Try opening it again. Click on it again. All right, I'm going to bring this off of that screen. We're done with designer for right now. I'm going to close that down. Um, let's just, we'll leave Pro Stitcher up. Uh, we don't need that anymore. Let's close that down. That's Melissa <laughs> jogging on the beach. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right, now I have closed my QPI and I can't find that. There it is. Okay, let's try this again. We'll start over. Here we go to my C designs, purchased designs, down to urban elements. We need to get to the Pantos folder. There is the Chantilly. There we go. Good grief. Okay, so I'm just going to start and do my keywords. I'm going to call it Panto. I'm going to call it Edge to Edge. It's got some swirls in there. It's got some spiral in there. And it's got a little bit of feather in there. And it's really pretty. I don't exactly know what price point I might put it in, but I'm just going to go with two and a half. A lot of my stuff falls in two and a half. Okay, so I'm going to hit Enter. You'll see that the changes were applied once I hit enter. Now, if I go back up to the top of my QPI, and if I search for edge to edge, if I search for 0.0255 and something with swirl in the name, Chantilly should be on the list. Do you see it? Oh, good grief. Where is it? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Well, that's not supposed to happen. Okay, I'll go back up. Just make sure we did it right. We'll refresh the tree. You, you can type Chantilly. Yes, let's do that. Bring it up. Okay, Panto okay. Edge to Edge. Oh, you got a period after the oh, 0255. Yep, yep. Typos. Typos will get you every time. There she is. See? So that's just a real life example again of how I, I checked to make sure I didn't already own it. I went and purchased it. I stopped immediately. I made my determinations about keywords and then I moved on. Okay? All right, you guys, we've been on we've been at this quite a while, but I hope I sincerely hope that it was helpful for those of you who don't have QPI. I hope you're going to run right over and get it for those of you who have had it for a while and have not done anything with it. It's time to get in there, you guys. And for those of you who this was a refresher, maybe you learned a thing or two because you have been using it. It really is a great program. We hope to be able to enhance it. 
Um, I know that there are other file formats out there. That would be another huge upgrade. Um, the embroidery is something that we want to do. All in good time. All in good time. Hello, dear. Oh, there um, you are down okay, there. We, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm a little man down here. <laughs> okay. So we do have to respond to a few more questions before we go. We do appreciate people hanging around here, but there are a few questions and I want to hit as many of them online as I can. Um, all right, some of these we'll go back and we'll, we'll address them offline here right now. Um, so Cricket had asked about the pound sign in front of the folder name. Here again, that's a character that is sorted first before the letter zero or a or whatever. So yes, it's by default, because you can change the sort order, by default, the folders are going to list items in alphabetical order and the pound sign comes up. So that's what that was. Uh, do I have a cloud or have to pay for storage? Um, we will cover that in the OneDrive class. <laughs> Um, and whoever's calling me right now, I am very sorry. I'm not going to be able to answer the phone. Um, I'm going to silence it. All right. It. So there was a question while Paul is silencing his uh, phone about whether you have to put the name of the file in the keywords. So if you look at my screen right now, I added the, the name of the file in the search and nothing is being found. Okay. So let's take the name of the, of the, uh, design out of the search. Let's go down to Chantilly and let's actually put the name of the pattern as a keyword. Okay, now if we put it up here, we should find it. So it's, do you see though how not, there was no other edge to edge, no other with swirl, no other, all of these things had to match that search to find that file. So again, that's one of those things that you have to decide whether that's worth it to you to add some part of the name as a keyword. I don't. Typically, I don't. All right. Um, moving on. Can you add more hours to my day so that you can play with QPI and being stuck in the Q UK, you don't have designer? Uh, Carolyn, I am sorry, but I hope that you are around when Melissa comes to the UK in April. I will be taking along as your bodyguard. All right, um, back to the cloud stuff. You do get five gigs of cloud with Microsoft. We won't get into the cloud right now, but the future and the best place to be is, is to using one of these cloud features uh, because if your device dies, your data is safe. That's the main feature. Um, another question, Rebecca. Rebecca's putting her patterns on a USB thumb drive. My first statement being a 30 year IT enterprise data protection specialist for Verizon Honeywell is if that is your only copy of anything and you're putting it on a thumb drive, you are going to lose it physically or the drive's gonna go bad. I just, thumb drives are for moving data, temporary storage, not the only copy, okay? Now QPI should not normally be set up under setup to go and look at USB drives because every time it boots up, it reads through every file it finds and USB drives are slow, it'll slow things down. So I strongly suggest that you start working with your patterns on your hard drive in a scenario that they're backed up to the cloud or not, and that you use USB as a second copy that you have or for transporting them to the machine to do your work. Um, okay, I'm looking for any last questions here. We still have 52 people. I saw it 63. Carolyn Clark, it is nearly half past midnight and you think I'm going to be able to sleep? <laughs> uh, no. How's that? that? That's my answer to that one. Um, so can you Paul, back up? Go ahead. Um, can we, are these questions still going to be available to us after we're done? I sure as heck hope so. 
So okay. I think we're pretty good. We we are under. I knew it'd be ninety minutes. We're under an hour and a half, which is a good good time here. Carolyn says we're fabulous. Of course, thank you very much. That's that's kind. Um, yeah, Melissa's back. See, she's got her <laughs> face up here. She does exist. So quit sharing your screen so we can see your beautiful face, and we'll both say goodbye here. Yes. Okay. So you guys, thank you so much. Paul and I are going to discuss all of this afterwards and keep watching. If you saw my post from earlier today, somebody asked me about doing webinars with designer and the like. You guys, I have so much on my to-do list. I just like, I can't get to the stuff fast enough. The studio's not quite done yet. I mean, I am, you think you can't sleep. I am so excited. I'm beyond myself. One thing I will say about designer, if you have not got it, get it, okay? There's been some snafus with activations and whatnot. I know the Handy Quilter people are working overtime to answer questions and emails. Just get it. Um, the other thing, if you have missed any of my posts or stuff that I've put out there about designer, you can make an area into a stitchable design and you can make a stitchable design into an area. If that doesn't make you buy it, we're never going to make you happy, okay? <laughs> you just need to get it. It's an amazing program, and I am so excited about building designer into my content. I'm not going to exclusively teach designer and, get, and go down the roads of creating the fanciest feather you've ever seen. That's not what I'm going to do. But I am going to incorporate designer into your everyday life. How can you pair together your pro stitcher with designer what are real life concrete ways to do that that is what i am going to be focusing on okay all right we appreciate you we we just are so blown away thank you for everything for being a follower for all of your business and from our home to yours happy quilting and good night good night all see you